You know, it's the best style probably ever, ever to go. I have to With the help of German engineers, Steve attached two Greek pickle barrels, padded them with nuclear warhead packing material and 12 layers of fiberglass, and surrounded them with inner tubes from giant tiles. He then covered the 600 pounds of captain in a huge canvas bag that was inscribed with the name of a man Steve always wanted to meet, Johnny Carson. Today, Steve Barrel is on display at the Rainbow Center in the Mega Falls, where months after his plunge, everyone still asks him the same question. Why did he do it? Well, for one thing, to back myself up and to show people what I really want to do, which is become a good stuntman. Right, at least I can say I did the falls. <laughs> did it right, I guess, you know? Okay, give me that Niagara Falls look. Steve's hoping there are a few other things he'll get right, too. He's tried his hand at modeling, and since building his own rig and organizing the labor to help him on his leap cost him about $6,000, he's also hoping to get some endorsements. He's already got a call from Mademoiselle Magazine to be a part of their sexiest list. And finally, he got that invitation to meet the man he's always wanted to meet. And would you welcome Steve Trotter. Were you scared? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would you do it again? Uh, you wait, you watch. <laughs> You're not going to try it again, are you? Nah, I will talk about it. No, you've done it once. That's, uh, that, that's really enough. While he's laughing about it now, Steve knows that going over the falls is no joke. He just happened to get away with one incredible stunt. More or less after the years of years of preparation. Oh, you know, I tell everyone, you don't even think of doing something like this. Just now, Steve Trotter is realizing how singularly lucky he was. He followed his dream, and he's here to tell about it. We just showed up. We just showed up. What it feels like dropping that far? Like, oh, it's what? So what? It's like an elevator with no cable. 22-year-old Stephen Trotter of Barrington, Rhode Island, went over Niagara Falls in a barrel today and is alive to tell us about it. ABC News and Eyewitness News have obtained this exclusive video of the trip shot by Trotter's support crew. Through the mist, you can see Trotter's barrel just released near Terrapin Point, about 100 yards from the brink of the American side of the Horseshoe Falls. Trotter's craft described as two Greek pickle barrels held together with foam, fiberglass, and inner tubes. It went over the falls and fell 172 feet to the rocks below. Minutes after his plunge, Trotter's barrel emerged from the mist, and then he tossed out his helmet and asked himself waving to let his crew know he was okay. Agra Parks Police took Trotter to the hospital, but a quick check showed he suffered just a scratch. Later at the police station, officials described Trotter as an aspiring stuntman from Barrington, Rhode Island. He's a gentleman that's been planning this stunt apparently for five years. He was stopped on November the 13th in 1984 by the Niagara Parks Police before attempting a similar stunt. He uh, was able to do it today. He said without uh, very little trouble at all. Trotter emerged from the police station. Cheers. Steve Trotter is a superstar today. His name will go in a history book and you'll probably see him on several network television shows. And he made it all look so easy. Was I hurt? Was I hurt? See that little scratch? <laughs> How old are you? 22. How long have you been planning this? Years. Years, like five years, four or five years. But you went to Niagara Falls and... When and, I was a little boy. And, and tried to climb the rock. <laughs> and got spanked in front of the whole crowd. <laughs> how did you decide what was the right type of barrel? Well, yes, I mean, how do you plan for I had that? a few engineers, a guy from Germany. You know. Well, it was more or less two Greek pickle barrels with the nuclear warhead packing. And his, the president of this company was like... Gun ho about it. Love the idea. <laughs> you know, he was like, hello, hello. Our trees, cutting out little pieces for me. I brought my rig up there and he had wedged them in and glued, glued them to the sides and I put pieces in my neck where my neck wouldn't move and all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do the night before? Well, we went to our last supper, uh, as they say, and uh, I had seafood. Uh, I love seafood. And uh, we went back and I prepped up the people what they were supposed to do the How next morning. How many people morning. were working with you? I had an 11 man crew. My friend out here, too, guy, I could see which he had a rope tied to his waist to a tree. 
and he had the thing uh, dragging out into the rapids. He falls in the rapids, goes underwater. We thought we lost him. He comes pulling out with the rope. Like something like a minute and a half yeah. tall to get down the river. And then the crest was like, you get to the crest, and it was like so silent. You know, right? When you could, you're part of the noise until you get to the crest, and then you're the noise. So it seems so silent until you hit the bottom. And it's a lot of stunt men. They do a lot of stuff where, I mean, they'll do anything, anything for a buck. You know, I'm not making much off <laughs> this. This is from the man that just, just went over Niagara Falls. Falls. <laughs> and I'm not making, I'm not making any money off this. I didn't intend to. Uh, it's not the money that I want. It's self-satisfaction. You know. <laughs> what about Timex? Uh, they haven't gotten in touch with me yet. I don't know what their deal is. You know. I understand you wore two of them. I had two watches, one on one end, one on the other end. They were on the outside? Yeah. And were they still ticking? I'm not even going to tell you. If they want to know, they can come in. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, the sneakers I wore, I got these sneakers on right now, the Reebok sneakers. I want them. They give me a little boom, you know, because I've been wearing their sneakers every day since I did this thing. You know, I, uh, the sneakers are the best. And the cost of the rig was, what, $6,200 $6, in the last, what, f couple of years, you know? They repossessed my car last week <laughs> so I could pay for the trip up here. <laughs> so anyone out there wants to buy me a nice Porsche or something, no problem. <laughs> you know, but I want to get into my stunt work, what I really wanted to do. Oh. It's crazy to people, but it's not to a lot of people that are in the stunt business that are, aren't... Like, you're not used to this kind of stuff here. Out in California or something, it's an everyday kind of thing, you know. They're stunt, all nuts. Stunt, no, it's not like they're all nuts. It's just the stunt work is just part of a business that goes with the movie industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have it. Safety is like their main thing out there. They want everything so safe. You don't want a guy getting killed every week on a set for doing, like, stunts. A fire guy getting burned and have his whole side of his body burned. Like a good-looking guy or a good-looking girl. Afraid of a lot of things. You wouldn't catch me in a cemetery when it's dark at night. That's for sure. <laughs> not this guy. But you will go over the falls. Yeah, the falls is not... It's not a big thing when you work on it for five years. You know, to you, it's... To other people, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But to myself, it's, you know, just no big deal. For the movies or Yeah, television? anything. I Live from Mr. Laughs in Fort Lauderdale. So Kirk Cable presents South Florida Sports with Henry Barrow and Mike Kozlowski. A live program featuring the superstars, the greats, and the legends from the world of sports. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to South Florida Sports. Our, it's a pleasure to have our Irish contingent back with us tonight. They've been missing from our audience for a few weeks. You know, Mike, I never cease to be amazed. The bigger the star, the nicer the people. That's, that's absolutely right, Henry. Uh, talk about two legitimate superstars, nationally known, internationally, internationally known, and uh, very humble people, two just real fine citizens and uh, great examples of uh, American youth. Unlike Young professional people. football players who are all <laughs> prima donnas. <laughs> certainly, not certainly not a prima donna. It's the next guest that we're going to have on tonight because he is as crazy as Mike Kozlowski in many ways. Th this guy's a legitimate wacko, though. Yeah. I'm a mellow guy. <laughs> okay, I'm a, everybody who knows me knows I'm a mellow guy. Certainly. Let's bring out stuntman Steve Trotter. <laughs> wacko. <laughs> Have a seat, guys. Yeah, but a, a legitimate wacko. Yeah. I mean, there's a difference. Okay. Yeah. Not much, yeah. but... Uh, I mean, we, you know, it's everybody stops and thinks, wakes up one morning and says, hey, I'm going to hop in a barrel and go over Niagara Falls. I mean, d don't you all think that once or twice yeah. in your life? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The back row does. Yeah. I know well, those guys The do. back row in this place is liable to have any kind of hallucination. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if you really know how this happened or not, though. But Steve went to Sandy Leach at Universal Travel and said, hey, I want to take a trip to Buffalo, and, and I want you to set me up a nice little side trip, uh, something interesting. And I, I think we can take a look at that nice little side trip that was something interesting, and, and maybe you can describe it for us while we're taking a look at it. 
kind of foggy. Kind of foggy is right. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of foggy. There's a barrel the out mist, there. The mist that day was moving towards the, uh, there it is, right oh, before man. it goes over. The drop is 176 feet, 17 oh. stories. <laughs> wow! Eat your heart out, Greg. 170 feet, he died. <laughs> Pretty high. And, and you survived. Yeah, I got a little scratch right there. It's all, it's all healed. Describe that barrel that you went over in. Well, was you it. designed it, didn't you? Yeah, well, I had a German engineer design it with me. It was uh, two Greek pickle barrels with nuclear warhead packing inside. Two air tanks, air pressure gauge, Sony Walkmans, Rolling Stones, you know, <laughs> a whole bit. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, it, had, it was a really high-tech rig. You know, it was the best barrel that ever went over those falls. That's just not by me saying that. It's by the engineers that have looked at it afterwards and stuff like that, you know. Now, how do you determine which way it's going to land? I mean, you're well, yeah. Over. I, you have, you're supposed to put ballast, that's weight on one end, so hopefully your feet go over first. My ballast didn't work. I went overhead first. <laughs> you know, that was kind of a drag, but, uh, because I hit a rock. I hit one of the biggest rocks there. But, you know, I, was, I had a dragster harness. I was so strapped in, it's almost like you cheapen the Niagara stunt, you know, but that's the legend up there, all the daredevils and stuff that have been up there. What kind of position are you in when you're inside you're like, that barrel? Uh, you're like this. You're like about right like this, and your harness is on, you're breathing. You can hear yourself. You can almost hear your heartbeat. You're so nervous, you know. I was like, Shit. You weren't nervous, I were was. You? I swear to God. I was sitting there. I'm like, oh, my God. And I had the tunes on and stuff. <laughs> and I turned them off, and I was trying to hear my... Uh, a crew man on shore telling me he's like 50 feet, 25 feet. Good luck, Steve. You're going over. <laughs> <laughs> now, you also did something with the Golden Gate Bridge. What did you do there? Uh, yeah, world records uh, trapeze swing. Just like in a three-ring circus, you'll see um, the trapeze people. This is a world record trapeze. We've uh, got some video a... of that. Maybe you can describe oh, what wow, we're seeing. All kinds of video. John F. Kennedy hat. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this gets me nervous. This is looking over the edge? Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. 220 feet. Oh. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty intense. Hey. <laughs> Did I tell you it takes a legitimate wacko to go <laughs> jump off the... No, the I'm in the real safety stuff. Yeah. Honestly, I, you don't think it's safe, but the backup I put into this and the... Oh, look, God, the work I put into these stunts, you know, it's really hard. All the work, all the safety. How many broken bones can you register? Just my hands, all my fingers, my toes. I broke my arm. Burned. I've been burned a few times. Nothing serious, Nothing just serious. busted just up. Minor things. Right? No, that's what I'm going to get into, high fall fire gags. Just all high fall and fire stuff. They got a good new fire suit that I want to purchase. You know? What's your next thing that you're thinking about? Uh, just watch the TV July 4th. <laughs> Should be pretty wild. Uh -huh. July 4th? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to check what? it out. I can't. Give me, give me a hint. What, give me, give me what a network? Hint. What network it's are we going to? I don't know. It'll probably be shown on all of them. <laughs> oh, oh. One, one of these things like a guy suddenly appears on the side of the Empire State Building. No, nah, that's, that's old hat. That's <laughs> no, but I mean, that type of thing. Yeah, you're not going to announce it. You're going to do it, and everybody will see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because everything I've been doing is illegal, and my fines are so expensive <laughs> now. I owe 5000 to the Coast Guard, 500 to the San Francisco Coast Guard. Oh, God, it's like, end up... <laughs> when am I going to get this money? I'm on the road now. <laughs> really right. Steve, you right. thanks for being on. For sure. For I sure. appreciate it, and thanks for showing us and letting us share some of those things with you. All right. Now, next week is Memorial Day on Monday night. We will not have a live program. Uh, we know you all are going to be out somewhere, so we're going to be on tape. And we want to say that uh, our guest tonight received uh, Buena Vista Wines from Buena Vista Winery in California. And our next live show here will be June 2nd, Believe it or not, this young fellow's 50th birthday. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Right.